everyone and welcome to Connect Church. As the early church Christians gathered to hear the story of Easter, they were most likely huddled together in their homes, protecting themselves from an outside threat. They brought fear, faith, and grateful hearts into small household gatherings as they heard the story of the Messiah who died and rose again. As we gather online today, we may have more in common with those early Christians than ever before. So welcome everyone to our Easter at home celebration. Sit back, get comfortable, grab a coffee, and join us along with your family. Later on during the service, we will celebrate communion. So if you haven't yet already prepared yours, go ahead now, gather some bread and some juice, and we will celebrate together. Unfortunately, Easter looks a lot different this year than what we're used to, but that doesn't stop us from celebrating this special day. This year, we asked our Connect kids what Easter means to them. Let's take a look at what they had to say. What does Easter mean to you? Um, Easter means Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he gave us free will. To me, Easter is remembering what God did for us by sending uh, Jesus, his one and only son, to die on the cross for us. It means like a time where everyone comes together to remember how Jesus sacrificed himself so we would have our sins like washed away and how he opened the gates to heaven. I think Easter is all about remembering how God sacrificed himself for us. Celebrating that Jesus died on the cross to or cross to um for our sins and he he um he he um he did it even though there was a lot of pain. Worshiping the Lord with songs has always been a practice among Christians, and we here at Connect Church love to sing praises to his name. So join us by standing and praising the risen Lord along with our worship team because he conquered the dead and nothing is impossible for him.
the God who can do everything. Just believe in Jesus. It's for you, not against you. into my mind. We got Jesus and we got Easter Bunny. And they're both pals. The word Easter makes me think of Jesus. The cross. An empty tomb. The first thing that pops into my mind is just like a picture of a cross, I guess. I should first think of a tomb and like a grave. It's kind of sad, but I do. And then I think of like chocolate and then I'm like, oh, there's a cross there. And like, boom. That's like literally the order, otherwise it's like cross and chocolate. Jesus. Good day everybody. Hope we're all doing well during these crazy times. Daniel here to bring you a message from John chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed that the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For until then they still haven't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in and saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other sitting at the foot of where the body Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. 
She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was a gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to my father. But go find my other brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Hey, Connect family. I trust you're all keeping well during this time. All of our kids' ministry team leaders have really enjoyed reconnecting with all of your kids on Zoom. If you haven't already set yourself up, hurry up, you're missing out. Every Sunday after our main service, uh, we host our kindergarten to grade five class at 11 in the morning on Zoom. So just follow the link that's already been sent to you and we'll see you after the message. Why do you celebrate Easter? I celebrate Easter because that's when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and then came back to life three days later. Like, why do I celebrate? Because it's important for a Catholic or like Christian group, not Catholic, Christian group to, um, to celebrate Easter and, and not just about the Easter Bunny. Like, I mean, I like the Easter Bunny and we'll talk us and stuff. But um, usually we would go to church, but I mean, we can't anymore because it's quarantine. So that we can remember that God gave his son to save us. I celebrate Easter as a symbol to remember how God sacrificed himself for, to wash away our sins. I think Easter is all about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and rising again three days later. And that just shows how much Jesus loves us. So we can um, praise God and we can, we, can, um, we can praise him and we can remember him for... Um, we can remember him dying on the cross for us. We celebrate Easter as Christians because it's the time where Jesus died and then resurrected. Um, and then he saved us from our sins. We celebrate Easter as a symbol of what Jesus did for us. And um, so that we can remember that our sins are saved and forgiven. I celebrate Easter because I think the memory about how Jesus died on the cross for our sins is really important, so I like to celebrate that every year for him. There is no doubt that Easter this year looks a lot different. Today, here at Connect, we are celebrating what we call Easter at home. Yes, it's different, but because it's different doesn't mean that it lost its meaning. Actually, when we look into the scriptures, we see that the Passover, which was the first Easter, was celebrated at home and around the table as a family. Coming myself and Ruth from a, a Latin family, for us it's so important when a family comes together for a meal around the table. It's always a precious moment. I don't know if you recall, I guess you, you do, when you were still in Portugal. Yes. was uh, something that we did it, you know, so often. Your siblings, uh, with your parents, my siblings with my parents, all together for a meal. Table, yeah. yeah, a time of laughing, yeah. sharing yeah. stories, how was the week, was so precious. And actually, still today, we, we do the same with our children. We are always looking forward to yeah. have them, you know, yeah. for the, the, at the dinner table. From the beginning, God chose meals eating as a special opportunity for revelation and communication. Eating is an obvious uh, required function of life because it sustains and prolongs life, gives strength and adds joy and pleasure to our lives as well. Because it's, it's a gathering time, uh, you know, for the family around the table, community and church. Uh, that's why at Connect we love when we have, you know, gatherings together around the table as much as possible. Because we share, we talk, we, we, we laugh, and uh, we change life, you know, around meals. Yeah. Ruth, I would like to ask, if you don't mind, to open the Word of God and read for us the scripture in Exodus chapter 12 and verses 7 and 8 and verses 12 and 13, please. 
Yeah, this is what the word of God says. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs mm. and bread made without yeast. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. The Passover was a foreshadow of an announcement of Easter, of what Jesus would be doing in the future, shedding his own blood for forgiveness of our sins, offering himself as a sacrifice for us once for all, bringing freedom to all who would accept him. We can say that the Passover meal was the announcement meal of Jesus coming as our Redeemer. Many years later, when Jesus was getting ready to celebrate the original Passover as, as a good Israeli, because they were told and taught to keep doing it so they would not forget the deliverance that God had done at Egypt and to continue to look forward for what he was going to do. It's so interesting that it was exactly during that celebration, the Passover, of something that was announced years before, again, around the table, it was there that Jesus revealed that he was the lamb that would supply the blood for cleansing and protection. And he told his disciples that he was the unleavened, the sinless bread that was to be consumed with the meal. It was there that uh, around the table, Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper or communion. And, uh, and once again, I'm going to ask you to read for us in Matthew chapter 26, verses 27, 28, and 29, that talks about what happened that day around the table. And it says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the transgressions of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew mm -hmm. with you in my Father's kingdom. That was the fulfillment meal. Jesus was about to go to the cross to shed his blood for us. But there is another meal, the resurrection meal. This meal happened, happened after the resurrection of Jesus. It was the meal at which Jesus revealed himself as the glorified Christ and victor over sin and death. And we can read it in Luke. And again, I'm going to ask Ruth to read for us that passage. And it says, When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. Yes, Jesus was alive, and Jesus is alive today. He talked with the disciples, he could be, be seen and touched by the disciples, and even he sat around the table, and he had a meal with them. So it's no wonder that the announcement uh, of Jesus' coming was at Passover around the table. The fulfillment was around the table. And then the proof of his resurrection all happened around the table during a meal. It's also no surprise that Jesus declared that he is the bread of life. In other words, we need to consider that we need to take Jesus because when we take him, he produces eternal life in our lives. <laughs> Friends, Jesus is the bread of life. Bread is to be consumed. Bread gives strength. Bread gives life. My question for you today is, do you want to have Jesus? Do you want to have the bread of life? Do you want to have eternal life? If so, come to Jesus. 
and accept his invitation. Because Jesus is saying to you, come to me and I will give you rest. If you want to surrender yourself to Jesus, if you want to give your life to Jesus and receive the forgiveness of your sins, repeat after me this short prayer saying, Lord Jesus, I recognize your love for me. I recognize that you are my Lord and my Savior. I accept your forgiveness. I surrender myself to you once for all. Make me a new person in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you did it, or even if you didn't, but you still want to know more about this Jesus, about what he has to offer you, I would like to encourage you to go to our web page and on the top right there is the menu. Click on the menu. On the drop down menu, go to contact us. There is a card that you can fill out and send to us. Send your questions, your comments, your prayer requests. We will be following up with you because we want to help you. Now, we would like to celebrate communion, the Lord's Supper. And I would like to uh, encourage you to go, if you don't have it yet prepared, and grab some bread and some wine or juice or whatever liquid, because we are going to celebrate communion together. Myself with my wife here, Ruth, we're going to celebrate communion here, you with your families. Although we are apart, but we are together in spirit. And together as church, as Connect Church, we're going to celebrate communion today. The New Testament communion replaced the Passover meal. For the church communion, it's a symbol of what Jesus did for us at the cross of Calvary. The juice represents his blood that was shed for our sins. And the bread represents his broken body for our sins as well. So let's take communion together and let's remember what Jesus did 2,000 years ago for you and for me. I'm going to ask you to read for us uh, some instructions that the Apostle Paul he left for all of us regarding the Lord's Supper. And it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. So let's read together the Word of God. Shall we? For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. So, church, let's do it together. We're going to do it here. You're going to do it at your place. Let's take the bread and like Jesus said, the word says, Jesus, he gave thanks and then he broke the bread and he passed it to his disciples. And let's do the same. Let's remember what Jesus did for us. Let's partake together. Do this in remembrance of me. And then the Apostle Paul, he keeps saying that after the meal, Jesus, he grabbed, he took the, the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake together the cup as a remembrance of his blood for us. Amen. Let's thank him. Let's praise him for what he did for us. Good. Do you want to lead us in prayer? Yes. Let's praise him. Father, we praise him, Father. Jesus. Because um, you chose to send Jesus Christ to this world to die for all of us, Lord. And we are grateful for what you did for all of us. Without what you have done, we could never be here we could never have a, an eternal life and fulfilled life 
So we thank you, God, because you did what no one else could do for us, Lord. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, dying for all of our sins and paying a debt that no one could pay. Could pay. We could now, through Jesus, which is the way, the truth, and the life, we could get communion. We could be in fellowship and in relationship with God the Father. Recognizing that we are sinners, recognizing that we sinned, and we repent from our sins, Lord, and we know that the way is open by the blood of Jesus. We can get to you, and there is forgiveness for our sins. There is acceptance. There is grace. Your grace is all that we need, Lord, and we can experience it. We have it in our lives. We believe it, and we receive it, Lord. So thank you, Father, because we are never alone. You are always with us, like you promised, never leave us or forsake us. And um, thank you, Lord. We pray for everybody that is uh, hearing us and uh, vi uh, uh, watching this, this video. We pray for those that have not received you in their hearts as their Lord and Savior. We pray that you reveal your love to them, you reveal your grace to them in such a way like no one else can do, oh Lord, because only you know yes. the human heart, Lord. All you know how to reveal yourself to everybody, Lord. So we pray for them that they open their hearts and their minds to you and let them, let you come and enter and change their hearts and their lives so they can also have eternal life. We pray, Father, for a, a blessed time in every household, in every family, not only for Connect family, but for everybody that is watching us. We pray, Father, your blessings and your presence in every household. And we thank you, Father, for every blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Friends, Jesus is alive. So let's celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And because he lives, we shall lead as well.
the cross. You went to the tomb, you was buried. But at the time of three days past, he rose again. And he won't die again. He's living forever. And because he lives, you can live. I can live forevermore. There's no death for our soul, for our spirit, if we live in Jesus. There is good reasons to be hopeful and to be glad. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, God. something prepared for you on Zoom, so join us there. Every Sunday at 11 a.m. after the online service, catch us on Zoom. If you have any more questions, feel free to email us at riseyouth at connectedmonton.ca or follow the links provided. See you there. Today here at Easter at Home, we welcome and give the mic to the Honorable Zaid Abul Taif, NP for Edmonton Manning. Good morning. I'm humbled to be part of your Easter ceremony today. In these turbulent times, faith empower us to push through negativity and to continue to inspire ourselves to rise up to the challenge as a church community. Today, I congratulate you all for keeping up with the tradition and celebrating the resurrection of Christ, one of the most important events in Christianity. It is important that we continue on with our beliefs and promote a sense of normalcy in our community. Thank you all for being such a strong, welcoming, and inclusive community in Edmonton, Manning. Congregations like yours support many constituents through faith and community initiatives. May God bless all of you. May God bless all of you. Happy Easter. Thank you, Mr. Butaif, for your nice words and Easter greetings to all Connect Church members. Please be assured that here at Connect Church, we pray for you as well. We pray for all the authorities as we are instructed by the Word of God. We want to wish you God's blessings and a happy Easter to you and your loved ones as well. Dear friends, here at Connect Church, we exist to serve the community. If you know someone in need during these tough times that you are living in, please contact us because we have a team of volunteers that are ready to go and to drop off groceries or medication or something else of a need. But you need to contact us. Please email us at info at connectedmonton.ca and we'll be in contact with you and follow up according to the need. Please keep connected with someone. Call text, email, or video call someone. Don't walk this journey alone. We are all in this together. Don't fear or panic. Stay in peace. These times they will pass and we will be meeting in person again with our loved ones and our friends and family, and we are going to be okay. Keep watching our video posts throughout the week on Facebook and the YouTube channel at Connect Church Edmonton. Soon she will come again to make some announcements but on the description of this video, you can find information and links regarding our weekly gatherings and activities. Yes, the building is closed, but the church is open. Once again, I encourage you to go on our website and right after this service and fill out the Connect card. We want to know you. We want to know how we can help you. If you have any prayer requests, there is a card 
for a, a prayer request as well that you can use and send to us and our team will be praying for you according to your need. To all of you, on behalf of my family, we wish you a happy Easter as we celebrate the resurrected Jesus. We want to extend a heartfelt thank you for the generosity and support you have shown our church over the last few weeks. Giving is a form of worship, so if you feel compelled to support us financially, there are three ways that you can do so. By visiting connectedmonton.ca, then select the menu bar, followed by the Give Online, or via e-transfer to info at connectedmonton.ca. And lastly, through mail, by way of a check made payable to Connect Church to the address listed below. The building we worship and praise in may be closed, but church is not. Stay connected with us through our various small groups online. This week via Zoom, we will have our ladies prayer meeting at 7 p.m. on Thursday, as well as our small group Bible study at 7 p.m. on Friday. And of course, Sunday at 10 a.m., we will be streaming church online through Facebook, YouTube, and on connectedmonton.ca. Thank you so much for spending this Resurrection Sunday with us here at Connect Church, and we pray a blessed Sunday and an awesome week for you all. Thank you.